that is called Satya, Treta, Dwarpa and Kali Yuga, four ages beginning with the very pure golden age Satya Yuga. Y estas cuatro yugas se llaman Satya, Treta, Dwapara y Kali Yuga. Y empieza esta yuga con la era dorada. So, in that time, very millions of years ago, then the earth was very pure, the air was very pure. Entonces, en ese tiempo, hace millones de años, la tierra era muy pura, todo era muy puro. And the people's bodies and minds were also very pure. They lived for a very long time, a very long lifespan, hundreds of years. Igualmente, el cuerpo y la mente de aquellas personas era puro y vivían muchos años, como más de 100 años. So the Vedas say that at that time in the Satya Yuga, the Golden Age, the Dharma, the spiritual practice to attain enlightenment, was a, a silent meditation. Entonces en esa era dorada, en la meditación, el Dharma, era que meditar en silencio. At that time, with a pure mind, people could meditate silently and see uh, God in their hearts. En ese momento, la gente podía meditar en silencio y podía meditar en Dios que está dentro de su corazón. And they used to see God in the heart of everyone else also. Y también podían ver a Dios en el corazón de los demás. But gradually, as thousands of years passed, then the people became more polluted in their thoughts and the world began also, started to become more polluted. Y así cuando pasó el tiempo, millones de años, la gente empezó a contaminarse, contaminar sus pensamientos e igualmente el ambiente. And the main pollution was the envy. Y la mayor contaminación era la envidia. To feel some hostility towards others. El sentir hostilidad hacia otros. So at that time, the people, they lost the ability to see God in their brothers and sisters. Y así, de esa forma, la gente empezó a perder la habilidad de ver a Dios en el corazón de los hermanos y hermanas. So, uh, then they started to do an uh, external type of worship. Y entonces empezaron a hacer una adoración externa. Uh, in the form of fire sacrifices. En la forma de fuegos ceremoniales de sacrificio. They would light a fire and pray to God to appear in the fire and make offerings to him. Swaha, swaha. Entonces ellos prendían así, de la misma forma, una fogata y ellos hacían oblaciones cantando esto de swaha. But gradually as thousands of years passed by, then persons became uh, unqualified also in this uh, ritualistic process. Y de la misma forma pasaron miles de años y las personas perdieron la cualidad de hacer estos rituales. So then in the next age, the Dwarpa Yuga, it came, and the Yuga Dharma, the practice for that age to attain perfection, was uh, puja, serving the deities in the temple. Y en la siguiente era Dwapara Yuga, entonces el Dharma era hacer puja, adoración a las deidades en el templo. So you can see here, there's a temple room, over, and there are very beautiful, we should not say statues, they're called Vigraha. But looks like statues of Krishna and his Shakti, his energy of love, Radha. Y así como ustedes pueden ver alrededor, también nosotros tenemos aquí un templo. Y en realidad no debemos percibir como estatuas, sino que se llaman vigrahas. Y igualmente está aquí el Shakti de Krishna, que es Radha, que se llama Radha. Mm -hmm. So, in that age, then the people, they develop love for God by seeing the deities in the temple and bowing down to them. Uh, offering prayers, offering flowers, and so on. Entonces, en ese tiempo, la adoración a las deidades, el desarrollo por el amor, del amor de Dios, se, realici, se realizaba ofreciendo oraciones, postrándose, cantando a Dios. So, Vigra is not a statue. Entonces, Vigraha es, no es una estatua. In Sanskrit, Vigra means vi, vishesh, rup, especially, graha, to accept. So, Vigraha, especially to accept your service. God who is invisible to your material eyes becomes visible in this form, Vigraha. Esta palabra en sánscrito que es Vigraha, Vi viene de la palabra Vishesh, que quiere decir Rupa, que quiere decir forma, y Graha quiere decir que 
acepta. Entonces, así Dios se manifiesta, se hace visible ante ti y acepta tu servicio. But gradually, time went by thousands of years, and then the next age came. This is the age we are in now, Kali Yuga. Y así igualmente pasaron miles de años y vino la siguiente yuga, la, la siguiente era, y esa se llama Kali Yuga. Now air is polluted, water is polluted, land is polluted. Y es en la era que estamos actualmente. El aire está contaminado, el agua está contaminada, la tierra está contaminada. And people's minds are very materialistic. Y la mentalidad de las personas es muy materialista. And all of these different paths to uh, enlightenment. They don't have the, enough power now to make us become fully purified. Y estos diferentes caminos que se han mencionado para la iluminación no son suficientemente poderosos para avanzar. So, the Vedas say in this age, the process for self-realization, for enlightenment is kirtan. Y para esta era, en los Vedas se dicen que el proceso para la iluminación o la autorrealización se llama kirtan. Oh. That is loudly glorifying the divine names of God. Eso quiere decir que en voz alta se hace la glorificación de los nombres de Dios. It's very powerful. Es muy poderoso. Uh, on the vibration of the names of Krishna destroys all your karma. Y así la vibración de los nombres de Krishna destruye todo tu karma. Uh -huh. You have a destiny that you have made by your past activities in previous lives. And you are forced to experience that. But when you chant the divine names, then all your karma is put in the fire. Entonces uno tiene un destino hecho de las actividades pasadas y es lo que nosotros tenemos que atravesar. Pero el cantar el santo nombre de Krishna es como que todo este karma lo lanzamos al fuego y se quema. Se destruye. Even the yogis by Ashtanga Yoga, they do pranayama and by controlling the pran, they try to make the mind steady. Igualmente así los yogis que practican Ashtanga Yoga, practican este pranayama y hacen de que la respiración pueda hacer que su mente sea estable. But singing is also one type of pranayama. Igualmente el cantar es un estilo de pranayama. And when you chant the holy name, very fine current of pran rises up your Shushumna Nadi and completely takes control of your mind. So you get the benefit of meditation. Uh, meditation for many many years you get this benefit just by singing the holy names yeah. igualmente cuando uno canta los santos nombres eh, se produce una corriente muy sutil de aire de prana que circula el shushumna nadi es decir el canal central de los chakras and also you should know that when the heart is pure and overflowing with love for God y así el cantar puede purificar y puedes tener el mismo producto de haber, de haber hecho el pranayama. Y este cantar te va a dar amor por Dios. Uh, yeah. Purifica el corazón. When, when a person is completely pure and overflowing with love for Krishna, then naturally they sing because of joy. Y así cuando el corazón está completamente puro y tiene amor por Dios, por Krishna, entonces es una persona que está cantando muy alegremente. And they dance in, with great ecstasy. Y bailan en gran éxtasis. So the, the kirtan or the singing of the holy names with the music is not only the path to perfection, but when you are perfect, you, that's what you do anyway. Igualmente el cantar estos santos nombres con la música no solamente es el medio de la perfección, sino que cuando alcanzas la perfección igualmente sigues cantando. So all the topmost saints on the highest level of realization, they've glorified the holy name. Y así todos aquellos maestros autorrealizados, los más elevados, igualmente glorifican los santos nombres de Dios. Jesus Christ said, "Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name." It's the first teaching of Jesus. Igualmente, to glorify the holy name. Igualmente así, Jesús eh, dice, eh, santificado sea tu nombre en la tierra o en el cielo, es la primera eh, instrucción y glorificación igualmente de Jesús. So, just as you are a conscious being. Así como ustedes son una entidad consciente. So, God is also a conscious being with feelings. Igualmente Dios es una entidad consciente con sentimientos. And he reciprocates with everyone. 
y es recíproca con cada uno. If you take one step towards Krishna, then Krishna takes a hundred steps towards you. Igual cuando tú das un paso hacia Krishna, él toma mil pasos hacia ti. And he reveals his very beautiful divine form. Y él revela una hermosa forma hacia ti. But only to those whose love is unconditional. Pero solamente aquellos que sienten un amor incondicional por él. If our love has conditions. Pero si nuestro amor tiene cierto condicionamiento. I will love you, but only if you do this, this, and this. But if you do that, that, and that, then divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Te voy a querer si solamente cumples esto, esto, esto y haces aquello, aquello, aquello. Si no de otra forma va a haber un divorcio. Uh -huh. So this is in this material world we have conditional love. Así en este mundo material sentimos amor condicionado. And because our love is conditional, that's why we experience this plane of existence. Entonces, porque nuestro amor es condicionado, nosotros experimentamos este plano material. But by the practice of bhakti yoga and singing the holy names, then our love for Krishna becomes unconditional, and then we become qualified to transcend and experience the divine realm. Y entonces, practicando y cantando los santos nombres de Krishna, nosotros podremos trascender y llegar a ese reino divino a través del Bhakti Yoga. So, we want to sing this mantra called the Maha Mantra, the Great Mantra. Entonces, vamos a cantar este Maha Mantra que se llama Maha Mantra. El Gran Mantra. El Gran Mantra. Mantra. So, you, can you repeat? ¿Pueden repetir? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Hare. So Krishna is the name of God. Entonces Krishna es un nombre de Dios. Krish means attractive, beautiful. Krish significa hermoso, atractivo. And Na means Ananda, joy. Y Na significa viene de Ananda. Eh, Felicidad. So God is not boring. Dios no es aburrido. And not ugly. Y no es feo. <laughs> God is the mm, complete combination of beauty and joy. Dios es la completa combinación de belleza y felicidad. And Krishna has an energy of love. Y Krishna también tiene una energía de amor. So that energy of love is called in Sanskrit Radha. Y esa energía de amor que tiene Krishna en sánscrito se llama Radha. O Hara. O Hara. Hara. Hara means the female goddess who uh, can steal, who steals the heart of Krishna with her beauty and loving services. Hara significa la diosa femenina quien con su amor y su poder roba el corazón de Krishna con su amoroso servicio. So Hare Krishna is the prayer to the most beautiful and joyful uh, supreme lord and his energy of love. Y Hare Krishna significa que estamos orando al más hermoso y bello lleno de felicidad y a su amor. And Rama Rama means who himself gives pleasure to everyone. Y Rama significa que aquel mismo que da placer a todos. Mm -hmm. So this mantra is very beautiful. Entonces así, de esta forma, este mantra es muy hermosa. Love has two parts. El amor tiene dos partes. One is the love you experience in meeting someone. Una es el amor que tú experimentas al encontrarte con alguien. And the other is how you experience the love when you are separated. Y la otra es cuando tú experimentas este amor en forma cuando están separados. Do you have this saying in Spanish? In English you say, absence makes the heart grow fonder. When you are separated from someone you love, then your love increases more. Tal vez tenemos algún dicho en, es, en español que dice que cuando hay separación, esto incrementa el amor que cada uno siente por el otro. So when there's separation, then afterwards when you meet, then there's more joy. Hay un tiempo que están separados, pero cuando se vuelven a encontrar existe mucha mayor felicidad. And the more joy you feel, then when you are separated again, then the more separation you feel. Y así cuando like a fish out of water, oh, I cannot live. 
Y así cuando te encuentras, experimentas un gran, gran, una, un gran felicidad, pero cuando también te separas puedes experimentar un gran sufrimiento, igual como un pez está fuera del agua. So meeting and separation, these two aspects of love, is like the movement of a sword. Y así estos dos aspectos del amor, el encuentro y la separación, son como el. Um, a sword. When you're cutting wood, it's called a sword. Yes. Es como cuando cortas con mm -hmm. una hacha. Con una espada. espada. So the sword goes this way and then this way. Y así es cuando vas cortando de una forma, de una forma a la otra forma. So whether the love is a meeting or in separation, mm -hmm. but by meeting and separation, it's cutting deeper into the heart. Y así, para una forma de cortar y la otra forma de cortar también al encuentro y separación. Y hace esto que se profundice el amor. So in this mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, that is, rather the goddess of love and Krishna, they are meeting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, but then what happens? Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, now separation. Entonces en este Mahamantra, cuando se dice Hare Krishna, es, existe un encuentro de Krishna y su amada, pero cuando repetimos Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, existe una separación so, de ambos. Ram is the name for Krishna, so Hare Ram, Hare Ram, now they meet again, and then Ram, Ram, Hare Hare, separation again. Igualmente Rama es otro nombre de Krishna, igual cuando dices Hare Rama, Hare Rama, se están encontrando, y cuando es Rama, Rama, Hare Hare, existe una separación. If you have on your um, radio, you have the volume control. You can turn up the volume. Y así como tienes en tu radio el control del volumen, tú puedes ir aumentando el volumen. So the volume can increase. Y así el volumen aumenta. So with this mantra, because this mantra embodies meeting and separation, so it is always increasing the volume of love. Entonces, como siempre the hay... mantra is causing the volume of love to increase more and more. Entonces, como hay eh, esta, en, este encuentro y esta separación, es, siempre está aumentando el volumen del amor. At first, you may not experience it at first. Tal vez al principio tú no lo experimentes. Mm -hmm. But stay, keep the mantra in your heart. Pero mantén el mantra en tu corazón. And slowly, slowly, that vibration will purify all material thoughts and material feelings and ignite a great fire of love for God. Y así gradualmente eso va a hacer que eh, se purifiquen tus pensamientos y tus emociones y así puedas suprender el gran amor por Dios. Are you ready? ¿Están listos? Yeah. So sometimes you sing Hare Krishna. Sometimes we sing Radhe, the goddess of love, and Sham. Sham is also a name for Krishna. So just repeat and we'll go on this journey to the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. Solamente repiten el nombre y así vamos a ir al glorioso reino de Radha y Krishna. Krishna Vaidam Trisha Krishna Sangopangastu Parshadam Yajay Sanchetana Payaira Yajanji Sumeda Saha Namo Mahavatanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram.
Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste First of all, I offer my heart like flowers thousands of times at the lotus feet of my spiritual master, my supremely worshipable Gurudev. Nitilila Pravist Om Vishnupad Ashtotara Satasishimad Rupanugacharivaya Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Primeramente ofrezco corazón en forma de flores millones de veces a los pies del otro de mi más amado maestro espiritual Srila Bhakti Vedanta Goswami Narayan Maharaj Because we are born in this world spiritually blind Porque nosotros hemos nacido en este mundo and Guru, the spiritual master, oh, very patiently and very carefully uh, teaches us how to open our spiritual eyes. Secondly, I bow down to my Guru's Guru and to his Guru and to his Guru and all the great spiritual masters in unbroken chain going back thousands of years to Krishna himself. And finally, I offer my namaskar to all of you, my very dear brothers and sisters. Yesterday we were discussing 
the subject of how to become peaceful. Ayer estábamos hablando nosotros del tema de cómo podemos estar en paz. It is said, Krishna Bhakta Nishkam Atayeva Shanta Mukti Bhukti Siddhi Kami Sakali Ashanta. Only a person who has unconditional love for God is peaceful. Así como en este verso se menciona, solo aquel que tiene un amor incondicional por Krishna está en paz. Why? Because they don't want anything. Porque ellos no quieren nada. The persons who are trying to enjoy this world, they always are disturbed by desires. Oh, I wish I had this, I wish I had that. Aquellas so they cannot be peaceful. Aquellas personas que tienen deseos materiales, que desean algo de aquí, quiero aquello, quiero esto, nunca pueden estar en paz. So, bukti, bukti means those who want to enjoy sense gratification, material enjoyment, they're never peaceful. Bukti significa aquellos que buscan la, el, la disfruta de los sentidos, aquellos deseos materiales, y ellos nunca pueden estar en paz. Then, mukti, mukti means liberation. Y luego está mukti, que significa liberación. Those persons who said, I've had enough with life, it's too much. Aquellas personas que dicen, oh, esto es suficiente, ya tuve demasiado en esta vida. I'm going to renounce everything and become a monk. Y dicen, voy a renunciar todo Or y voy a volverme un monje o una monja. I don't want to be in this world anymore. Ya no quiero estar en este mundo. My soul should get liberation. Mi alma debe conseguir la liberación. So they are also not peaceful because they want, they have the desire for li their own liberation. Incluso aquellos no están en paz porque tienen el deseo de conseguir su propia liberación. So mukti bukti siddhi. Siddhi means there those who are doing astanga yoga and they're trying to get yoga siddhis, mystic powers. Sí, bukti mukti siddhi. Siddhi significa aquellos que están practicando ashtanga yoga. Siddhi significa que a través de esto quieren obtener poder. They want to sit and oh man, levitate. Ellos quieren sentarse y repetir el mantra om y levitar. So they're also not peaceful because they want something. Igualmente aquellos no están en paz porque desean algo. But those who have bhakti, pure devotion. Pero aquellos que tienen bhakti, devoción pura, ellos están en completa paz. They They don't want anything for themselves. Ellos no quieren nada para sí mismos. In the flow of love, they're always thinking, but how can I please Krishna? That Krishna should be happy. Y así en la corriente del amor dicen, oh, ¿cómo puedo complacer a Krishna? ¿Qué puede hacerle a él feliz? So Krishna is already happy. Pero Krishna ya es feliz. <laughs> But they want to please him more. Pero ellos desean complacerlo aún más. So they are themselves very joyful and themselves very peaceful. Y ellos están muy contentos y felices y también en paz. So bhakti yoga is considered to be the supreme uh, stage of yoga. Y así el bhakti yoga es considerado como el estado supremo del yoga. If you are very passionate. Si tú eres muy apasionado and have material attachments, y tienes ma eh, apegos materiales, you have to do karma yoga. entonces tienes que hacer karma yoga. Karma yoga means that you have your house and your job and your family and you do all your responsibilities very, very carefully, but you try to maintain equanimity. Samatvam yoga uchate, Krishna has said, to have equanimity in the difficulties of life, this is called yoga. Entonces, eh, aquellos, ¿qué significa hacer karma yoga? Significa que tú tienes una casa, tienes familia y haces eh, y realizas tus actividades de una forma muy cuidadosa y, obtiene, y tienes que ser ecuánime, tanto en el sufrimiento como en el sufrimiento. And if your sometimes mind is disturbed, you can sit, you can do some pranayama and make the mind peaceful. Así, si alguna vez tienes tu mente inquieta, te puedes sentar y hacer esta respiración de pranayama y así puedes agitar tu mente. So, uh, in karma yoga and ashtanga yoga, one gradually makes progress to sattva gun, the mode of goodness, peaceful mind. And some persons who are quite detached from the world, they sometimes do jnana yoga. 
Y aquellas personas que tienen algo de renuncia de este mundo material pueden empezar a practicar Jnana Yoga. Jnana Yoga es filosófico yoga. Jnana Yoga es la filosofía del yoga. Jnana means knowledge. Jnana significa conocimiento. So in Jnana Yoga one analyzes all the components of the world, all the different elements, to distinguish between the self, what is the self and what is not the self. En Jnana Yoga uno empieza a hacer este análisis de los componentes y los elementos y también hace la distinción entre lo que es el ser y lo que no es el ser. And then that the jnanis they meditate on their soul as being not the physical body and also not the um, oscillating material mind. Y así los jnanis meditan en que no son este cuerpo material pero tampoco son una mente de oscilación. And they try to search out the root of existence. Y tratan de buscar la raíz de la existencia. But bhakti yoga comes to the point directly. Pero bhakti yoga viene al punto directo. You learn from the spiritual master, Krishna is the root of all existence. Y así tú aprendes del maestro espiritual, que Krishna es la raíz de toda la existencia. So by pleasing Krishna, you become happy and the whole, everyone in the world becomes happy. Y así de esta forma, al complacer a Krishna, están complacidos y todos se sientan felices en el mundo. You cannot please everyone. No puedes complacer a todos. You know, once upon a time, there were two friends and they had an old donkey. Así, les cuento esta historia que una vez, era una vez so que había dos amigos y tenían este burro. Este burro no podía cargar a los dos juntos. Entonces uno estaba montado en el burro y otro estaba caminando. Someone said, look at this cruel person. He's riding on the donkey and making his friend walk. Y una persona dijo, oh, él está montado en el burro y hace que la otra persona camine. Mm -hmm. So then. He got off and put his friend on the donkey. Y entonces él se bajó y puso a su otro amigo encima del burro. Then someone else said, "Look at this cruel person. He's riding the donkey and making his friend walk." Y otra persona dijo, "Oh, él está encima del burro y está haciendo que su amigo camine." So then they both got onto the donkey. Entonces luego ellos dos se montaron al burro. Then someone said, "Look at these cruel persons, both riding on this old donkey." Y así dije, otra persona dijo, oh, mira estos dos personas crueles, los dos están encima del burro. So then they both got off and they were carrying the donkey. Entonces luego ellos se bajaron del burro y los Someone dos said, empezaron Look a cargar Someone said, look at these stupid persons carrying a donkey. Y otra persona dijo, mira estos dos tontos que están cargando al burro. This is the nature of this world. Whatever you do, always someone will criticize you. Y esa es la naturaleza de este mundo, que cualquier cosa que tú hagas, alguien va a ver para criticarte. It's impossible to please everyone. Es imposible complacer a todos. Actually, it's very difficult even to please one person. Incluso es muy difícil right? de complacer solo a una persona. Who's been married? ¿Quién está casado? So you know, you can write a PhD thesis on that subject. Ustedes, si ya si saben esto, pueden escribir una maestra sobre esto. So, just like if you have a tree, and you try to please the tree by putting water on each leaf one by one. Es así como si tienes un árbol y tú y tú tratas de regar este árbol a través de sus hojas una por una. You bound to miss some of the leaves. Estás de, de hecho eh, de, destinado a perder alguna de estas hojas. And even the leaves actually they cannot take the water. Incluso las aguas no pueden las hojas no pueden tomar agua. The water is taken by the roots and then distributed to all the leaves. En realidad, la raíz es quien toma el agua y distribuye a todas las hojas. Just like your body also. You cannot, your hands cannot eat. Y así como tu cuerpo, tus manos no pueden comer. Your feet cannot eat, your ears cannot eat. Tus pies no pueden comer, tus oídos tampoco pueden comer. They have to collaborate together with each other and give all the food to the stomach because the stomach will give energy to every part of the body. Ellos tienen que colaborar conjuntamente para dar este alimento al estómago y el estómago es quien va a distribuir la energía a todo el cuerpo. So just as by watering the root of a tree, the whole tree is benefited, or by giving food to the stomach, the whole body is benefited. When your time and your energy and your devotion is given to Krishna, then you are benefited and everyone is benefited. Understand? De la misma forma que cuando tú pones el agua en la raíz, todo el árbol se beneficia y el alimento en el estómago, todo el cuerpo se beneficia. Así también cuando tú pones el agua en la raíz, el alimento en el estómago, todo el cuerpo se beneficia. Cuando tú pones tu amor, tu devoción, tu esfuerzo en Krishna, en realidad todo el mundo se beneficia. 
So this bhakti yoga, the yoga of devotion, is the true and practical wisdom. Y entonces este bhakti yoga es en realidad un conocimiento, de, es una sabiduría práctica. You can experience it for yourself. Pueden experimentarla ustedes mismos. I want to share with you one history. Quiero compartirles una historia. It was spoken by Krishna himself 5,000 years ago when he was teaching the subject of yoga to one of his very dear friends named Uddhav. Voy a compartirles esta historia que fue hablada por Krishna mismo hace miles de años. Hablada hacia su amigo más íntimo que se llama Uddhav. He said, millions of years ago, él le dijo, millones de años atrás, There was a great devata, like an angel. His name was Lord Brahma. And he had four sons. Y él tuvo cuatro hijos. And they are called the four Kumaras. Y fueron llamados los cuatro Kumaras. And he was also their guru, their teacher. Y él era también su guru, su maestro. So his sons, they were very uh, interested in the subject of yoga and meditation. Y así sus hijos estaban muy interesados en los temas de meditación y de yoga. So one day they were discussing among themselves. Así un día ellos mismos ellos estaban hablando entre ellos. Mismos. The four Kumaras and a question came to them. Los cuatro Kumaras así una pregunta surgió. They said, you know, in yoga you have to do pratyahara. Ellos dijeron bueno en yoga uno tiene que hacer pratyahara. Pratyahara means withdrawing the senses from the outside world and taking your vision and consciousness internal. So the Fukumaras, they were thinking that actually our mind is naturally attracted to the external sense objects like sweet things and soft things and very nice sounding things. Our sense is always, the mind always wants to go out and experience the external world. Y entonces los, los cuatro Kumaras dijeron, pero bueno, nuestra mente se, se siente naturalmente atraída hacia, la, hacia los objetos externos de los sentidos, como un sabor dulce, un olor fragante, un toque suave. So, when you see some chocolate, then no mind goes. So the mind is attracted to the objects. But if there's no object there, then naturally the objects come in your mind. If you're alone, no one is there, nothing is there, and you're meditating, what happens? All kinds of <laughs> desires come in your mind. So, the four Kumaras came to their guru and their father Brahma. And they asked him, our mind naturally goes towards the external objects and the objects naturally come into our mind. This is a very natural relationship. So how will we attain perfection in yoga by detaching our mind from the objects when they're naturally attracted to each other? Entonces, ¿cómo nosotros podemos desapegarnos de estos objetos materiales si naturalmente ellos vienen a nuestra mente? So, how will we attain the perfection of yoga Entonces, by ¿cómo? detaching the mind from the sense objects? Entonces, ¿cómo vamos a realizar la perfección del yoga si naturalmente nuestra mente se siente apegada a los objetos externos? So, when they asked this question, then Brahma, he thought, and he could not think of the answer. Why not? Because he had been involved in the acts of creation. That acts of creation. So, uh, when you're creating things in the physical plane, then this needs rajagun, passion. Rajas. 
Entonces, así, cuando uno hace una creación en, en el mundo material, necesita rayas, necesita pasión. And when the passion rajas comes in your mind, then you cannot think clearly about spiritual subjects. Entonces, cuando rayas, esta pasión viene a tu mente, tú no puedes pensar claramente. So Brahma was speechless, he could not answer this question. Entonces, así Brahma se quedó mudo y no pudo responder esta pregunta. Can you answer this question? ¿Ustedes pueden responder esta pregunta? Mm -hmm. Can you answer this question? ¿Tú puedes responder esta pregunta? Yeah. So just as he was there thinking, there appeared a very bright light. Y así cuando él se quedó mudo y estaba pensando, apareció una luz muy brillosa. It became brighter than the sun. Se volvió más brillosa que el sol. It became a thousand times brighter than the sun. Mil veces más brillosa que el sol. But it was cool, not burning. Pero era refrescante, no era algo que And no. in the middle of that light, they saw a beautiful swan. Y en medio de esa luz ellos vieron un hermoso cisne. It was a transcendental swan. Era un cisne trascendental. In fact, it was one avatar. De hecho, era un avatar. God has many avatars, many forms, incarnations. Dios tiene muchos avatares, hmm? formas y encarnaciones. And this one was called Hamsa avatar, the swan incarnation. Y este avatar se llamaba Hamsa avatar, la encarnación de un cisne. But they did not know who it was. Pero ellos no sabían quién era él. So God, Sri Krishna himself, had appeared in the swan incarnation to give the transcendental knowledge to them. Krishna mismo apareció de esta forma, de este avatar, de Hamsa avatar, para dar el conocimiento trascendental. So, before these four Kumaras, they were thinking that the soul is only light. Antes los cuatro Kumaras pensaban que el alma simplemente era una luz. And everything is one. Y que todo era uno. So, the Hamsa avatar, he knew this. Y Hamsa avatar conoc tenía conocimiento de esto. So, before answering their question, he wanted to joke with them. Y antes de contestar su pregunta, él quiso hacerles unas bromas. Uh, you have to know this one thing, that Krishna has a, a very wicked sense of humor. Y ustedes tienen que saber esto, que Krishna tiene un sentido del humor bastante. Krishna is... Sí, claro. Krishna is very, very funny. Krishna is muy, muy, muy gracioso. You know, in this world there's so much comedy. Ustedes saben que en este mundo existe mucha comedia. But where does the comedy come from? Pero de dónde viene esta comedia? Everything comes from God. Todo proviene de Dios. So God is the best comedian, he's best everything, but also the best comedian. <laughs> Dios es el, el mejor en todo, pero también es el mejor comediante. So, the first thing, this one, He said, if everything is one, then why are you asking, who are you? Because when they saw this one, they all bowed down and said, who are you? We don't know. So he said, If we are all spirit and spirit is one, then your question has no meaning. Sometimes people on the spiritual path, they think, I am God, you are God, we are all God, everything is one. But this idea is quite wrong. Because God's knowledge is unlimited. Porque la, las glorias de Dios son ilimitadas. Yes. El conocimiento de Dios es ilimitado. God's knowledge is unlimited. El conocimiento de Dios es muy limitado. You don't even know my email address. Ustedes no saben mi email, mi correo electrónico. So you, you are not God. Ustedes no son Dios. Our God is infinite. Nuestro Dios es infinito. 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 Nuestro Dios Why are you asking who are you? If everything is one, then this question has no meaning. And if you are an atheist, 
and think that there's no soul, we only have a body. Then, then everyone's body is made of earth, water, fire, air and space. Five elements in every body. So no need to say who are you. Because only five elements here, five elements here, five, same five elements everywhere. So then Hamsa Avatar began to uh, answer the question that was in their mind when he appeared. Entonces, así, Hamza Bakar empezó a responder las preguntas de la mente de ellos cuando llegó a ese lugar. So, listen very, very carefully. Entonces, escuchen muy, muy, muy atentamente. If you want to experience the illumination. Si ustedes quieren experimentar la iluminación. He said, Jagrat Swapna Susuptam Cha. Gunato buddhi brittayaha tasam vilakshano jiva shakshitvena vinishtitaha. You are Atma, a soul. And you are experiencing three stages of consciousness. Y estás experimentando tres estados de conciencia. Jagrat, Swapna, Shushupti. That means waking state, dreaming state, and deep sleep state. Mm -hmm. Quiere decir que en el primer estado tú estás despierto, en el segundo estás dormido, y en el tercero estás profundamente dormido. So, when you are awake, when you are awake, cuando ustedes están despiertos, then you experience, oh, I am this body. Entonces entienden que, oh, soy este cuerpo. And moving around here and there doing different things. Y se mueven aquí y allá y haciendo diferentes cosas. And this waking state comes from Sattva Gun. Y este estado de alerta, de despertar, viene de Sattva Guna, de la modalidad de la bondad. But when Rajas, passion increases, then you start to go to sleep. Y así cuando la modalidad de la pasión de Rajas empieza a incrementar, and you begin to dream. You have no choice. Are you in control? Can you decide, oh, this week I'm not going to sleep? You are not in control of your experience. Three gunas, sattva, rajas and tama, goodness, passion and ignorance are oscillating like this and they force you to go to sleep and then they force you to wake up again. And again, and again like this. So what happens? So what happens when you are dreaming? You you are thinking you are this body, but now your body is just lying on the bed. Just snoring. But you, your mind leaves the body behind. Pero tu mente deja atrás el and you are in your dream also now going here and there. But that body you thought it was me, now you have left it behind completely. And even you don't know that you are sleeping. E incluso, tú no sabes que estás when you are dreaming, you think that you are awake. Cuando tú sueñas, tú piensas que estás despierto. Who has ever uh, gone to work in their dream? Have you ever had a dream that you are at work? ¿Alguna vez soñaste que tú en tus sueños estabas yendo a trabajar? So, did you get paid for the extra time? <laughs> then why did you why didn't you take the day off? ¿Por qué no te tomaste un día because you were completely convinced that you were awake. So you went, you said, I'm late for work, I have to go. 
porque tú te estabas completamente convencido de que estabas despierto. Entonces dices, ah, bueno, ya es tarde, tengo que ir a mi trabajo. So when the guru, the spiritual master, says, you are in Maya, you are in illusion. Y así cuando el maestro espiritual, el guru, te dice, estás en Maya, estás en ilusión. Then you can have it, I am not in illusion, I am very clever. Tú puedes pensar, ah, no, no, yo no estoy en ilusión. I, I, have, I have so many degrees and master's degrees. Tengo muchos doctorados, yeah. tengo muchos But no, every night you get completely lost in illusion. Pero no es así, porque cada noche tú te pierdes en una completa ilusión. So don't think that you are not susceptible. You are completely susceptible to illusion in every moment. Entonces no pienses que no eres susceptible a la ilusión. Al contrario, eres cada momento tú eres susceptible a la ilusión. So you are not only in illusion in your dream. When, when you are awake, you are also in illusion. No solamente hay una ilusión cuando estás en tu sueño, sino que cuando te despiertas huh? también estás en una ilusión. If you are identifying with the happiness and distress, honor and dishonor, which is connected to the physical body. Si tú te identificas con la felicidad o la aflicción o en la honra o la deshonra. Uh, so, in your dream, In your astral body, in your psychic body, you're moving around, many <coughs> things. But then what happens? Deep sleep comes. And in deep sleep, now again, for the second time, but now you give up your psychic body. Y en, ese, en esa segunda vez que estás en ese sueño profundo, es ahí cuando tú dejas tu cuerpo astral. En deep sleep, the rapid eye movement stops, you know? When you're dreaming, your eyes are looking here. But it stops in deep sleep. Entonces, cuando tú estás soñando, existe un movimiento rápido de tus uh, pestañas, pero cuando estás en un sueño profundo, esto para. And in that state, you are not unconscious, but because you have separated from the physical body and senses, And separated from the mind also, now you are conscious of nothing. You are not unconscious. You are conscious of nothing. Entonces, en este estado, en donde tú estás separado tanto de tu cuerpo y de tus sentidos, y luego del cuerpo astral de la mente, tú no estás inconsciente, sino que tienes conciencia de nada. After some time in the state of deep sleep, again you become embraced by your psychic body. And then after some time, your subtle body embraces the gross body and then you wake up. Y así tu cuerpo sutil nuevamente abraza tu cuerpo burdo y nuevamente está despierto. So the Hamsa avatar, he said, you are not anything you experience when you are awake, you are not anything you experience when you are dreaming, you are not anything you experience or the absence of experience in deep sleep, but you are the shakshi, the witness of these changing states. Entonces, Hamza Batar les dijo, tú no eres lo que experimentas cuando estás despierto, no eres cuando experimentas en, en un sueño, no eres cuando tienes la experiencia de un sueño profundo. But you are pero eres Shakshi. Pero tú eres Shakshi, un the, testigo de todo lo que está pasando en estos tres estados. You are the witness of the moving states of, of consciousness. Tú eres el testigo de este movimiento de los estados de conciencia. So by this uh, deliberation, philosophical de deliberation, you can locate yourself. Y así, a través de esta deliberación filosófica, tú puedes enfocarte, localizarte en tu propio ser. So that state of mind that is called that state of consciousness, sorry, is called shakshitwa. The quality of being Shakshi, the witness of the changing of the different material energies, wakefulness, dreaming, and deep sleep. Entonces, cuando tú tienes este estado de conciencia que se llama Shakshi Pua, quiere decir que tú eres el testigo del movimiento de estos estados de conciencia. So, when you are centered in yourself and in that state of, you are the Shakshi, witness. 
now you have some beginning of spiritual knowledge and as long as you are identifying with the body and mind you are in ignorance and illusion then the Hansa avatar he said something quite shocking he said and you should take it that I am delivering the message from him to you I'll, I form it I can be this one and you can be like the four Kumaras listening to this message so see Krishna said you are the Shakshi the witness and everything else is me Shakshi, the witness is you and everything else you're experiencing is only different forms of the energy of God everywhere. Only because we think something else exists apart, separate or independent from God. That's why we feel anxiety and fear. Fear and anxiety comes from thinking that there's something other than God that exists. Now, the Hamsa avatar will answer the question about yoga. The question was, if the mind naturally goes to the external objects, and the external objects naturally come to the mind, how can you be perfect in yoga by separating the mind from the external objects? Entonces, ¿cómo uno puede encontrar la perfección del yoga si naturalmente la mente se siente atraída por los objetos externos o estos objetos externos se manifiestan en la mente? ¿Cómo uno puede entonces alcanzar la perfección del yoga separando lo que es el cuerpo de la mente? So Krishna said, yoga isn't about separating your mind from the external objects. Yoga is about separating you from your mind. Mm. This is why we take shelter of mantra. Ma man means mind and tra means deliver. That which separates you from your mind is called mantra. Because it is the mind which is the cause of a bondage to the material world. So the consciousness has to be separated from the material world. <laughs> <laughs> so then Hansa Avatar said yoga has two aspects one aspect to separate your consciousness from the material mind and the second aspect is to fix your consciousness on Krishna Entonces, yoga tiene dos tu conciencia de tu mente material y la segunda parte es que te ayuda que testa tu conciencia se pueda fijar en Krishna. So when you chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, both things are achieved at once. Entonces cuando tú cantas ese mantra Hare Krishna, esas dos partes del yoga pueden ser alcanzadas. Your consciousness is separated from the mind and also becomes absorbed in thinking of Krishna. So, 
Don't think I am not said anything which is against uh, karma yoga or jnana yoga or astanga yoga. There are different steps on the ladder, but the top step is bhakti yoga. No estoy diciendo nada en contra de astanga yoga, karma yoga, karma yoga sino que estos son es, eh, pasos o, eh, de una escalera hasta llegar a lo que es el bhakti yoga. Krishna describes all these different types of yoga in the Bhagavad Gita one after another because they're like steps leading to bhakti. Krishna también describe estos mismos pasos así como estos pasos en una escalera que nos lleva hasta llegar al bhakti yoga. Yeah. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Gracias por su atención. So, one thing I want to tell to the, those who are practicing bhakti. Let's say you are uh, chanting or hearing or serving your deities. But if you are doing this without being situated in Shakshitwa, the state of the witness, then your bhakti is not pure, it's mixed. Si ustedes están Materially contaminated. Because you are feeling, I am the doer. Porque tú estás pensando, oh, yo soy el, so the activities el of bhakti yoga are not performed by material energy. Entonces las actividades del Bhakti Yoga no son realizadas a través de eh, las actividades materiales. De devotion for Krishna is a divine energy. La devoción por Krishna es una energía espiritual, it, devocional. Yeah, it is called Swarup Shakti. Se llama Swarup Shakti. And so Bhakti, devotion to Krishna, is not a physical activity. It is the vilas of Swarup Shakti. It is the play. It is the joyful play of Krishna's spiritual energy. Entonces, bhakti no es una actividad por la energía material, sino que bhakti es el vilas del swarup shakti, que quiere decir um, que el It is the vilas, the, the joyful play of Krishna's spiritual energy. Es el juego de felicidad de Krishna. So when you do any devotional activities, first of all, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Naham Vipro, Nacha Narapati, Napi Vaisana Sudro, Naham Bani, Nacha Gripati, No Vanasto Yativa, Kintu Pradyan Nikila Paramananda Pumna Britabde, Gopi Patu Patakamalio, Dasa Dasa No Dasaha. I am not a student. I am not a householder, I am not a retired person, I am not a sannyasi. Entonces, si están realizando alguna actividad de bhakti, ustedes tienen que comenzar por este verso. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dice, yo no soy un estudiante, no soy un eh, hombre, de familia. hombre de familia, no soy un sannyasi. I am not a Brahmin priest. No soy un sacerdote brahmán. I am not a warrior, a king, no soy, katria. No soy un... Eh, I am not a merchant, businessman or farmer. I am not a laborer, shudra. I am, I am nothing of this world. I am only the servant of the servant of the servant of transcendental Krishna. This mantra is called Bhuta Shuddhi. Este mantra se llama It means uh, the mantra by which we purify our existence. Significa el mantra, aquel mantra que purifica nuestra existencia. And then being situated as a spiritual shakti witness, then we pray for the um, spiritual energy to come and take over our mind and senses. And then the spiritual energy will perform the activities of bhakti. Entonces, cuando nosotros estamos así centrados en nuestra en ¿Eh? the spiritual energy will perform the activity of bhakti. Entonces, cuando nosotros estamos situados así como sakshi, como testigos y oramos a que la la energía espiritual venga descienda a nosotros, entonces a través de nuestra mente, de nuestras actividades, 
Srila Rupa Goswami he explains that our pran is moving in our body and enlivening all of our senses and the spiritual energy of bhakti comes and mixes in with our pran and takes over all our activities and then then when you're acting then that is actually transcendental bhakti this is the energia Bhakti es cuando la energía del Supremo toma tu pran y actúa solamente a través tuyo. No it es comes and becomes propia. one with all of our prans. And then the spiritual energy makes us dance and makes us sing. Y es esa energía espiritual que nos hace cantar y bailar. The spiritual energy comes in our ears and then we can catch the beautiful descriptions of Krishna. La energía espiritual entra en nuestros oídos y entonces podemos the spiritual energy comes in our mind and though, this, though the transcendental world is beyond our ability to imagine even but the spiritual man, uh, energy causes the pictures of the spiritual world to appear in our mind also so only those who are very humble and they give up all pride, all ego, and they pray for the grace of Krishna, they can experience this appearance of bhakti in all their prayers. And then you become very joyful and very peaceful. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. complete our discussion. Oh, there's a question? Yes, yes. Okay. Does anyone have a question? Raise your hand. If you, if you have a question, raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Don't speak. Just raise the hand. And I'll see. Okay. We have one here. One. Anyone else with the question? Okay, we only have two. Okay, we'll do two. Because everyone is hungry. So two questions is enough. What's the difference between bhakti yoga and religion? Bhakti yoga and religion. Yes. Uh -huh. You know. Yes. Uh, ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre el bhakti yoga y la religión? Everything depends on how you define religion. Todo depende cómo defines la religión. Generally, people when they think of different religions, they think of a set of doctrines. Por lo general la gente piensa en diferentes religiones como diferentes juegos de doctrina. So one set of doctrine said, oh, you, uh, there's no reincarnation. Entonces en uno de los paquetes de doctrina se dice que no hay reencarnación. But another set of doctrine said, no, we believe in reincarnation. Pero en otro paquete de doctrina se dice, nosotros creemos en la reencarnación. So then they disagree and then they'll say, oh, this is one religion, but this is another religion. Entonces como hay un desacuerdo se piensa, esta es una religión y esta es otra religión. So the word for religion in Sanskrit is dharma. Por eso la palabra para religión en Sanskrit es dharma. And uh, it has a different meaning. It doesn't mean a set of doctrines. Y tiene un sentido distinto. No quiere decir un conjunto de doctrinas. Dharma comes from drida to the verbal root to hold. En realidad, esta palabra viene de drida porque quiere decir sostener. Uh, so, dharma or religion in the Vedas means that which something holds and can never let go. Entonces, dharma quiere decir en su sentido puro aquello que lo contiene y no lo deja ir. For example, what is the dharma of fire? Por ejemplo, ¿cuál es el dharma del fuego? The dharma of fire is to give heat. El dharma del fuego es dar calor. There's no such thing as Christian fire, Hindu fire, Buddhist fire, Muslim fire. Fire is fire. No hay fuego cristiano, fuego budista, fuego hindú, sino que el fuego es fuego. So, your doctrine you can change, but who you are you cannot change. Una doctrina podrás cambiarla, pero no puedes cambiar quién eres tú. So, the dharma of sugar is to be sweet. Entonces, el dharma del azúcar es ser dulce. So, the, the sugar may be white sugar, brown sugar, powder sugar, cube sugar. Quizá but sea if it's not sweet, it's not sugar. Blanca, morena, en polvo, en cubos. Pero uh -huh. si no es azúcar, no será dulce. 
So we have to ask this question to ourselves. What is the Dharma of my soul? Tenemos que preguntarnos a nosotros mismos, ¿cuál es el Dharma de mi alma? What is my faith, my confession? I can change, but what is it about me that is me and can never change? Mi fe, mi confesión podrá cambiar, pero ¿quién soy yo? Esto no cambia. So, that Dharma of the soul is service. Y el Dharma del alma es el servicio. Right? You see? So, when a person is in ignorance, in illusion, Cuando una persona está en ignorancia o ilusión, then they're serving, they have to do service to their, uh, to the president. Tendrán que servir al presidente. Yeah? You have to, you pay tax, right? Ustedes pagan impuestos, ¿no? Yeah? So, you're working and giving the money to the president. Entonces, están trabajando para darle dinero al presidente. You have to do service to your family. Y que hacer a su uh, if you are working in an office, you have to do service to the owner of the office. Si en una oficina, que al dueño de la if a person is all alone and they have no one to serve, si then they, they buy a cat. A quien servir, se un gato. <laughs> Because it's our nature. <laughs> We have to serve someone. <laughs> So, when we become free from ignorance, then we realize, actually, our nature to serve is, should be directed to God. So, when the service is directed to God, that's called Bhakti Yoga. So, this is the difference. Religion is some ideas that can change. But bhakti is who you are when you are not in illusion. Entonces, religión son diferentes ideas que pueden cambiar, pero bhakti quiere decir lo que eres tú cuando no estás en ilusión. Your true nature. Tu verdadera naturaleza. Uh, thank you. Yeah. And there was one question over here, Sarah. Yeah, a little one. Yes, when, sir. You know, you said that when you're um, the, the witness of our thoughts, mm. and then you said that everything that we're the witness of is God. So, mm. what is in our thoughts then would be God? Uh, well, it means that I said everything is God's energy. You know, simply, all is energy. For example, for example, could you translate the very question? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a question. Yeah, she will translate it very well. So just like um, there's, here is a fire, and if you come close, you can feel the heat of the fire. So then you say, "Oh, the fire is burning me." Because it's the action of the fire, but actually you're not touching the fire. But you're just close, you can feel the energy. So this material world, everything is God's energy. And he's inside everything, causing it to take many different forms, which appear and disappear. But uh, we are, our consciousness cannot accommodate that vast conception. Because it's very narrow. When our consciousness expands, then we can experience it. So you can see in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 11. Then Krishna revealed to Arjun that everything in the universe was just his different, his energy, but his inside and making all these forms appear and disappear. So everything, they're like a puppets. Entonces, todos aquí somos como marionetas. Uh, like a hand is inside a puppet. Como una mano que se encuentra dentro de una marioneta. So God is inside everything. Así Dios está dentro de todo. But what you are looking at is a puppet, his energy. Pero lo que tú ves But es solo directly. la marioneta es su energía, no ves a él directamente. 
But in the spiritual world, you can see Krishna directly. Pero en el mundo espiritual puedes ver directamente a Krishna. So in this way, it is said in the Vedas, Shakti Shakti Matayo obeyed. The owner of the energy and the energy itself, they're non-different, but still there's some distinction between them. Así los Vedas dicen que no hay diferencia entre energía y energético, pero aún así existe una cierta distinción entre ellos. Just like you say, open the curtains and let the sun in. Como por ejemplo tú dices, abran las cortinas para que entre el sol. But actually when you open the curtain, the sun planet doesn't... Pero en realidad se entrega el planeta en sol. But the energy of the sun is coming, so you say the sun has come. Pero sí, porque tú ves que la energía del sol está entrando, dices el sol está viniendo. So in this way, uh, that vision is, oh, oh, everything is God's energy. Entonces,